Hello and welcome to our annual general meeting live from the World Conference Center in Bonn, Germany. I'm Angela, social media manager at Covestro. Due to the spread of the coronavirus, we decided to do things differently this year. We are hosting our first ever virtual annual general meeting to protect the health and safety of our employees, shareholders and service providers involved in this event. Our chairman of supervisory board will kick off our fifth annual general meeting together with our board of management very soon. They will present a recap of our financial results from fiscal year 2019, the challenges of the corona crisis and our long-term strategic orientation to our shareholders and of course to you. So stay tuned, the event will start in a couple of minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, as chairman of the supervisory board at Covestro AG and thus chairman of this annual general meeting, I call the fifth AGM of our company to order. I would also like to welcome you on behalf of the board of management of the supervisory board. We would like to have welcomed you to this year's annual general meeting in person here in Bonn. Our AGM is taking place this year under unusual circumstances. The COVID-19 pandemic is a global threat to health, to life and health, and to human interactions as we have known them up until now. Some restrictions have been relaxed, but the order of the day continues to be to limit physical contracts and to practice social distancing. This makes a an annual general meeting with a large number of shareholders coming together as we've had in the past, something that is unfortunately not possible today. In agreement with the supervisory board, the board of management decided to hold this year's AGM as an online event without the presence of shareholders in person. This is a possibility which the German legislator gave to corporations as a reaction to the COVID-19 pandemic. The purpose here is to be able to have AGMs in the first place and to give shareholders the possibility to take the necessary decisions without posing risks to their health or the health of our employees or our service providers. For shareholders, this means that they can exercise their rights electronically and follow the meeting on the Internet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd also like to add that this was not an easy decision for the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board because we value the dialogue with you, shareholders. And I'm sure that you also value discussions with the Board of Management and the Supervisory Board of your company. 
A virtual AGM gives us only limited possibilities for this type of dialogue. This year, you were able to submit your questions ahead of time, and we will answer all of your questions during the course of this annual general meeting. The major advantage behind an online AGM is that with you, we can take the decisions we need to take within the normal eight-month period. We can review fiscal 2019 and take all of the necessary resolutions. This includes a resolution on the use of distributable profit for 2019 and also the dividend payment, among other things. The Board of Management and the Supervisory Board are proposing a dividend amounting to 1.2 euros per share as a result of the current economic situation, which means that approximately half of the net income from fiscal 29 will be carried forward. In other words, it will remain in the company. But rest assured, this too was a decision that was not easy for us to take, but we're convinced that it's in the best interest of Covestro AG and all of Covestro's shareholders so that we can give stability to our company. And next year, we hope, after the health and economic situation will return to normal, that we will be able to return to a higher dividend. The CEO, Dr. Steilemann, will go into more detail on this point in the course of his speech. Ladies and gentlemen, following these preliminary remarks, I would like to come to some of the formalities behind this online AGM. Of course, these deviate from a traditional AGM where the shareholders are present in person. First of all, I would like to note that the notice to today's online AGM, including the agenda and the proposed resolutions from the Board of Management and Supervisory Board, was published in the Federal Gazette on the 17th of June, 2020, in due form and in due time. Since then, all of the required documents and information were available on Covestro AG's website, and they are also available for the entire duration of this online AGM. One copy of all of the required documents is also available today with Dr. Mark Hammonds, our notary public who is based in Cologne, and he will be responsible for taking the minutes of today's AGM, as he has done in the past. Dr. Hammonds is sitting next, he will, when I sit down, he'll be sitting next to me, and of course, we will have the required social distancing. Welcome to you, Dr. Hammonds. The Board of Management at Covestro AG is present today. It is made up of the CEO, Dr. Marcus Steilemann, and Ms. Susheta Goville, Dr. Thomas Töpfer, and Dr. Klaus Schäfer. I would like to welcome all of them. I'd especially like to welcome Ms. Susheta Goville, she joined the Board of Management last August, and she is our Chief Commercial Officer responsible for sales, marketing, and innovation. Ms. Goville has held a number of management positions in renowned companies in the fields of marketing and innovation, and she will be contributing her experience here at Covestro. Ms. Goville, we are very happy to have you on board. With regard to the supervisory board, I am here in person together with Professor Dr. Nonnenmacher. The remaining members of the supervisory board are participating online using the video and audio transmission of today's annual general meeting. This is also due to the current circumstances caused by COVID-19, and it will help us to keep the number of personal contacts to an absolute minimum.
And now, at this point, I would like to welcome Ms. Petra Reinbold Knappe. She joined the supervisory board in January. Ms. Reinbold Knappe succeeds Mr. Peter Hausmann, who was a member of the supervisory board as an employee. He stepped down at the end of fiscal 2019 when he retired. On behalf of the supervisory board, I would like to thank Peter Hausmann once again for his many years of work on the supervisory board, for the good cooperation and a large number of valuable discussions. His successor, Ms. Reinbold Knappe, is on the board of the chemicals and trade un and energy trade union and is she responsible for education labor market and diversity Ms. Reinbold Knappe I too would like to welcome you here today ladies and gentlemen of course, we will be drawing up a list of participants for our online AGM as required by law. This will include the proxies designated by the company who are here in person and also the shareholders they represent and their respective shares. I would now like to announce the number of shares represented, represented which can be seen on the current list of participants. Of the registered share capital at Cavestro, amounting to 183 million euros, divided up into 183 non-power value shares, we see that 119,606,238 non-power value shares are represented here with the same number of votes. This is 65.36% of the registered share capital. Of course, we also have absentee ballots representing 85,222 non-par value shares. So that means all in all we have 119,691,460 non-par value shares which represents 65.41% of the registered share capital. The list of participants is in this room and will be updated on an ongoing basis whenever necessary. I will announce the number of shares represented later once again. The shareholders who registered in due time and in due form were able to submit questions prior to the AGM. This was done via the investor portal up until midnight of last Monday, the 27th of July, 2020. These questions will then be answered today following the speech given by the CEO and the report of the Supervisory Board. All in all, 62 questions were received from seven individuals. So that is not even more questions than at the AGM in 2019 when we received 50 questions from seven individuals. This is even more questions than we received on average in the last few years. I'm very pleased at the interest you are showing in our company and in our online AGM. It's important for me to note now that with regard to the questions, we have not made a selection. We will be answering all of the questions that were duly submitted. We will mention your name if you explicitly agreed to our doing so when you submitted your question. We will also answer your questions just as extensively as we would do in a traditional in-person AGM because it's important for us, it's very important for us, for you, our shareholders, to receive all of the necessary information so that you can appropriately decide on the agenda and on our proposed resolutions. In this way, we want to come as close to the dialogue we would have in an in-personal AGM, as close as possible under the given circumstances. 
and all of the shareholders who registered in due form and due time could also cast their vote electronically beforehand, either by means of absentee ballot or by giving authorization and instructions to the proxies designated by the company. During our AGM today, you can still do so using the website's investor portal. You can do this until the board of management has answered all of the shareholders' questions and until we come to the votes. I will mention this once more and explicitly tell you that that will then be the last possibility you have to vote electronically or to give instructions. I would like to ask you to cast your votes as soon as possible, and information on exercising your voting rights can be found in the notice to the AGM and on the company's website. I would also like to note that no additions to the agenda were requested and no counter motions were received. So that should suffice when it comes to formalities. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the agenda, which was published in the notice to the AGM. We want to begin with agenda items one and two, which deal with the financial statements and reports, as well as the resolution on the use of distributable income. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to hand over to the Chief Executive Officer at Covestro, Dr. Marcus Steilemann. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, on behalf of the whole Board of Management of Covestro AG, welcome to our virtual AGM. I am delighted so many of you are here today. Unfortunately, we're not able to gather in person due to the coronavirus pandemic. All of us are experiencing exceptional times now, and this continues to present us with new challenges. This applies to you, and this applies to us on the Board of Management of Covestro, and this applies to each and every one of our employees. And this is one reason why I feel it is important to begin by saying thank you. I am proud of our employees. No one could have foreseen the coronavirus pandemic, but Covestro has responded swiftly and professionally to the challenge. Around the globe, our employees have put their shoulders to the wheel. They are ensuring our plants operate safely and reliably, and they are safeguarding the supply to our customers. That's what they've always done, and now they are doing it under completely new conditions because the coronavirus pandemic has changed our daily work routine tremendously. Within just a few days, our entire organization not only adopted the new way of working, it also infused it with life. And I'm also proud of the solidarity demonstrated by our employees around the world. Today, they're showing this toward their colleagues, toward our business partners, and far beyond our company as well. All the more so when I think about what the crisis has demanded of each of us. Our guiding principle is we are one. This is simple when everything is running smoothly, but it's also our ambition in challenging times, and we have accomplished it exceptionally well. In the spring, we initially focused on maintaining production and supply chains, the health of our employees, 
business partners and customers has always been at the top of our priority list. Our administration employees have worked from home during the past few weeks and months. Only the necessary core staff was on site. And this has mostly remained the same until today. This was not so easy in production, and for this reason, I would like to extend a special thanks to our colleagues on the front line. They have kept our plants around the world running. In, it goes without saying, compliance with the very stringent protective and hygiene measures we have. Therefore, our global supply chains have remained stable at all times, and we are thus once again proving that Covestro is a reliable partner in tough times as well. This will lastingly strengthen our customer relationships, even beyond the current coronavirus crisis. We want to contribute to the containing the c global pandemic, and this is very important for us. Therefore, our employees around the globe have been working hard over the past few weeks and months. I would like to provide you with just a few examples. We've donated protective eyewear and respirator masks to hospitals in Germany to help doctors and nurses protect themselves against the virus. Our Chinese colleagues have given 10,000 units of protective eyewear to the German Ministry of Health. And we have provided the German Aerospace Center with plastic granulate needed to, to uh, make 3D printed face protection. The coronavirus pandemic has, of course, impacted our business, but we took prompt and systematic counteraction. That proved extremely challenging. The uncertainty was high, especially in the first few weeks of the crisis. We had to work cautiously and react quickly in a new situation that was in permanent flux. Our top priority is always to ensure the safety of our employees, business partners, and customers. That's followed by maintaining production and supply chains. Equally important for us is to safeguard our strong liquidity position because liquidity is vital to maintaining our ability to act in a situation where it is hard to predict what will happen. And to do that, we have resolutely taken various measures. We have taken early action by creating a, a foundation for sustainably improving efficiency through our perspective program. And we're now benefiting from this. This year, we expect savings of 130 million euros. On top of that, there is our short-term cost-saving program, which we have tightened once again in the course of the corona crisis. As a result, we will reduce costs by an additional 300 million euros instead of the 200 million euros that we had originally planned. As things currently stand, we will achieve this target. We have secured considerable additional liquidity through a new revolving credit line, through short-term working capital facilities, through a loan from the European Investment Bank, and through the issuance of euro bonds. We've adjusted our investment plans in the current fiscal year. We'll invest 700 million euros. That's about 200 million euros less than originally intended. And that further strengthens our liquidity position in the short term. Our employees worldwide are also showing their solidarity in this exceptional economic situation. In Germany, we've come to an agreement with employee representatives on the following model. We are adjusting salaries of all employees and at the same time shortening working hours. This applies for six months through the end of November. It goes without saying that we will share the burdens fairly and not make excessive demands of anyone. Strong shoulders bear the greatest load. And we believe that this also is what solidarity means. The higher the employee's pay grade, the greater the percentage of the salary reduction. Members of the Board of Management and Supervisory Board have taken a 15% cut in pay. That is a higher percentage than all other employees. And I'm very proud that more than 95% of our managerial employees voluntarily agreed to make this sacrifice. Our international companies have implemented the measures in a manner specific to their respective region. Our employees are therefore making a key contribution to helping Covestro navigate safely through the crisis. And I join all of us in thanking them for that. Shareholders, after careful deliberation, we've adopted a further measure. It has a very immediate impact on you. We are proposing to today's AGM a dividend of one euro and 20 cents. That is only half of the originally planned two euros and 40 cents. We've reached, therefore, a balanced decision. 
First, we are taking into account your interest in participating in the company's success to an appropriate extent. Secondly, we are safeguarding our strong liquidity position and creditworthiness. Thus, we are further strengthening the stability of Covestro in these turbulent economic times. In the end, all of us, including you as our shareholders, will benefit from that. Our systematic crisis management is already producing positive results. We can see that from our figures for the second quarter of the current fiscal year. You're already familiar with these figures. We released them a week ago, but let us still take a look at them now. The quarter was overshadowed by the coronavirus pandemic and its impact on all industries in the whole world. As anticipated, the economies of Europe and North America were hit particularly hard by it, and this affects us too. Core volumes fell sharply by 22.7 percent in comparison with the prior year quarter. That is also reflected in sales. The intensified pressure on prices is amplifying this effect. As a result, sales decreased by around 1 billion euros to approximately 2.2 billion euros. Earnings also fell 125 million euros following 459 million euros in the previous year. That decline however, is far lower than analysts had expected, and that is very good news. At the beginning of July, the analysts' assessment was that we would post earnings of just 80 million euros. What's the reason for that? Well, demand recovered quickly. The biggest fall in core volumes took place in April. The situation has progressively improved since mid-May particularly for polycarbonates. The segment has seen rising demand from the construction industry. So our diversified positioning is therefore proving its worth yet again. And we've also got some good news about our liquidity. Our free operating cash flow has increased to 24 million euros. And this shows our strict liquidity management is working. On the basis of that, we are confirming our guidance for the current fiscal year. Nevertheless, 2020 remains an exceptional year. The economic environment continues to be uncertain. Further developments depend largely on the course of the coronavirus pandemic, and that is not completely foreseeable. This makes it all the more important that we've established a solid position for ourselves. Our measures are working and producing positive results, and we will continue to steer Covestro unwaveringly through this crisis. We already mastered the challenging year of 2019 successfully. You're familiar with these figures, but it's important to me that we review them again. Price trends in 2019 were already very challenging. There's been a market shift in the supply and demand situation. Many new plants entered the world market. Demand, however, is not increasing to the same extent. This means that we're facing a global oversupply. That mainly affects the rigid foam precursor MDI. And our flexible foam precursor TDI is impacted as well, just like the polycarbonate area, that is, high-tech materials. In this challenging market environment, we achieved solid results in 2019. All key figures are in line with our annual guidance. Core volumes increased by 2%. Sales fell to 12 point 4 billion euros. EBITDA declined sharply to 1.6 billion euros. Our free operating cash flow was 473 million euros and ROSI was 8.4 percent. This means that we achieved all our financial targets in 2019. I would like to emphasize one thing. Demand for our products was absolutely intact until the coronavirus pandemic broke out. Since 2015, we have increased volumes by around 4% annually. I'll return later to our strategy for tackling this situation. And now I will hand over to Thomas Tripfa. He will provide you with a detailed look at how this impacted 2019.
Thank you, Marcus. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, I would also like to extend a warm welcome to our virtual annual general meeting. In the next few minutes, I would like to provide you with more details about our figures for the past fiscal year 2019 and explain Covestro's current financial situation. Let us first take a look at the individual segments. First, the polyurethane segment. That is the core product for the production of rigid as well as soft foams. Soft foams, you know, for example, from your car seats or mattresses. Rigid foams, for instance, are used for the efficient insulation of buildings. Here we posted very solid growth of 2.3% in fiscal 2019. Our sales declined to 5.8 billion euros over the same period, however. As is also the case for group sales, that is mainly attributable to the considerable pr pressure on prices. Now, this does particularly apply to TDI. In this area, our margins were at an exceptionally high level in fiscal 2018. Looking forward to the future, we need to differentiate between our products. The prices for MDI in fiscal year 2019 were well below long-term levels. That also remains the case for the moment. However, we believe there is a very good chance that the gap between demand and production capacities will close in the medium term, and we will therefore see a more positive price trend. We likewise have a surplus capacities and consequently pressure on margins in the TDI arena. That situation will not change in the short term as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. However, we do believe, and this is at least the positive news, that we have reached the bottom of the downturn. In these challenging conditions, the segment generated an EBITDA of 648 million euros in the past fiscal year. The margin of around 11% is below average for the cycle. That is due to the circumstances that I have just explained. Let us now turn to the second segment, polycarbonates. Now, these are high-performance polymers, such as what is used for car headlights, for laptop casings, or in medical equipment. Here too, we achieved a solid volume growth of 2.7% in 2019. We greatly benefit from our diversified positioning in this segment. Demand in one of our most important sales markets, the automotive industry, did indeed fall. However, that was more than offset by a rising demand from other industries, such as medical technology and electronics. Nevertheless, we experienced significant pressure on prices here too. That is also reflected in our earnings performance, 536 million euros and a decline in the margin to 15.4%, which we're not fully able to compensate for or despite the cost cuts. However, we remain confident that the polycarbonate business has good growth prospects in the long term and that it will remain a very interesting line of business that offers attractive margins. Now we come to our third segment, CAS. Uh, CAS stands for Coatings, Adhesives and Specialties. Now this includes products that increase the resilience of the vehicle coatings or flooring or that prevent the weathering of wind turbines. We had a slightly negative volume growth of minus 1% in this segment. That is attributable to the previously mentioned decline in global demand in individual industries, specifically the automotive industry. EBITDA in this segment was slightly up over the previous year at 469 million euros, and the margin remained constant at approximately 20%. We therefore managed to compensate for the negative volume effect on our earnings. A targeted acquisition in Japan helped us accomplish that. But we also succeeded in stabilizing our prices. In that regard, we can be satisfied with our results in the CAS segment. Let us now return to group level and look at our balance sheet for 2019. As you can see from the header, we can continue to report that our balance sheet for 2019 is exceptionally solid. Although net debt as of de December the 31st, 2019, rose by 1.16 billion euros, so almost 3 billion euros, that increase was almost fully due to accounting effects. 
Zum einen die Anwendung des Standards. Adoption of the accounting standard IFRS 16 means the existing lease agreements we concluded long ago are now carried on our balance sheet. This effect increased debt by 575 million euros. Moreover, the discount rate for pensions, in particular in Germany, fell again. As a result, our pension obligations in our balance sheet increased by 520 million euros. You can see that in the line on the right-hand side of the graphic. The combined total for these two effects is over 1 billion euros. While it's therefore true that our net debt has risen, this is attributable to the accounting effects I just mentioned. The ratio between EBDA and net debt has increased from 0.6 at the end of 2018 to 1.8. However, we remain unequivocally committed to maintaining a solid investment grade rating. Now let's have a look at our dividend policy. Our policy is to pay out an increased or at least stable dividend to our shareholders. That was also our intention last year. We will, however, deviate from that policy in 2020 due to the enormous impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Nevertheless, and I believe that this is good news in these times, we want to pay you, our shareholders, a dividend, despite the difficult macroeconomic situation. Envisaged, envisaged is €1.20 a share. The total payout would therefore be almost 220 million euros, which is equal to a payout ratio of 40% and as a result, a new record. I am convinced we have made a balanced decision with this proposed dividend. We consider the interests of our shareholders and we secure our robust liquidity position and credit rating. In, diesen in these challenging times, we benefit from having promptly and with determination implemented measures to maintain our ability to act. Back in 2018, we launched our Perspective Program, an extensive concept aimed at increasing our effectiveness and efficiency. Since then, we have reached and accomplished important milestones as part of this program. We have streamlined our standard businesses with structural measures. At the same time, we have maximized synergy effects in our portfolio and also increased cost efficiencies. We have also recognized our central functions and pressed ahead with differentiating our portfolio in order to put our company on an even broader and more stable basis. All that resulted in a contribution of 150 million euros to our earnings in 2019. A further 130 million euros are expected in 2020. Given the challenging market environment, we have implemented further short-term cost-cutting measures since last year. In view of the coronavirus pandemic, we have intensified efforts even more this year. We now aim to achieve additional short-term savings of more than 300 million euros this fiscal year, instead of the originally planned 200 million euros. And, as things currently stand, we will also achieve these targets. We will achieve those additional savings by reducing material costs, among other actions. In this context, we have initiated and conducted intensive budget reviews. Another significant item is our maintenance costs. Here, too, we are working intensively on a number of measures to reduce them. However, and I wish to emphasize this, these measures are in no, in no way affect the safety and responsibility and reliability of our plants. Our colleagues' safety always has top priority for us. We have primarily postponed non-acute projects here. Our procurement chain is a further area where we are leveraging cost-cutting potential by means of targeted optimization measures. In addition, there are the solidarity measures of Cavestro's global workforce, including the management board and supervisory board. Markus Steilermann has already explained this in detail. We are also scrutinizing our investments to further strengthen our liquidity. As you can see, we are thinking long-term with our perspective program while not neglecting short-term challenges. All these measures help us maintain the flexibility and security that we need to cope with the challenges of the coronavirus pandemic.
Eine starke Liquidität. A strong liquidity position is a further key success factor. It makes us more resilient and able to respond to unforeseen events. That is why we took various financing measures in the first half of this year to strengthen Covestro's lasting liquidity. We concluded a new revolving credit facility of 2.5 billion euros with a term of five years with our principal banks. That is a pure liquidity reserve since we have no plans at present to draw on the loan. The credit line is linked to an ESG rating comprising three criteria environmental, social and governance. The better we as a company perform in these areas, the lower the interest components are. Thus, there is a clear financial incentive for us to develop our business sustainably. We have strengthened financing of our current business operations, for example in relation to our plants, with short-term working capital facilities of 500 million euros and a loan of 225 million euros from the European Investment Bank will help us boost our research and development activities, in particular in the area of the circular economy. You will also be aware of the fact that we recently placed two euro bonds with a total volume of 1 billion euros on the international debt markets. These bonds were issued in two tranches, which are due in February 2026 and in June 2030, and they carry an interest of 0.875% and 1.375% respectively. There was exceptionally high demand from investors. It was so high that the issue was oversubscribed more than tenfold. A clear sign that the capital market has a great trust in Cavestro, even in these challenging times. As a result of this measure, we have significantly lengthened the average maturity of our bond portfolio and bolstered our liquidity further. Moreover, we will also use the funds we generate to repay the existing bond with a maturity up to 2021. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, Cavestro has a very solid basis, especially in these challenging times, and it enjoys the trust of the capital market. I would now like to hang things back to Markus Steilemann, who will go over the progress we have made in addressing our strategic areas of focus. Over to you, Markus. Thank you, Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, shareholders, the development over the first six months and the economic outlook for the current year show that we still find ourselves in, difficult mac in a difficult macroeconomic situation. But I'm sure of this, that we will successfully steer Covestro through this situation. That's because we're pursuing a clear and far-sighted strategy. It's a strategy that, that addresses current challenges, but above all, it will secure the company's long-term success. I now wish to explain to you three cornerstones of our strategy in further detail. First, we are positioning our innovative capacity. To do this, we are positioning ourselves thus to thrive in the future, and we're boosting our innovativeness. This is a far-reaching complex. I'll select two areas ex as examples. First, the major future issue of 5G, a fast-growing market segment. The 5G network standard for mobile communications boasts a high transmission speed, but also has a very short range, and this means that a dense network of antennas will be needed. 
This is the only way for us to achieve good network coverage, and we'll have to install a lot of antennas, and the material of choice is polycarbonate. You could call it the decathlete among materials. That is due to its unique combination of qualities. It's light and yet dimensionally stable. That makes it exceptionally safe to use, and it offers maximum freedom in terms of color and surface design. Polycarbonate, therefore, meets all the requirements to play a key role in the expansion of 5G, for example. Now let's move on to the second example, digital chemistry. Today we're able to calculate precise forecasts and models at breathtaking speed. Advances in the power of modern computers have made this possible. It's something researchers could only have dreamed of a few years ago. Perhaps you know this from chemistry lessons at school. Setting up and conducting chemical experiences, experiments is often a very laborious process. In the chemicals industry, these experiments are many times more complex. They involve a lot of time and resources, but now we can simulate them on a computer. We can change individual variables at the touch of a key and simply repeat the experiment as many times as needed. And this saves lots of time and money. Quantum computing is the pinnacle of this development. This technology boasts the greatest computing power now technically possible. In this way, highly complex chemical reaction processes can be simulated and assessed in the future. And this can be done very quickly. This will also play a vital role if we want to advance the circular economy. After all, it will enable us to take research and development to a completely new level. Also, and in particular, in regard to the pace at which we can develop innovations. We want to move forward quickly here, and we're looking for strong partners to do this. In early July, we announced a partnership with Google Working together, we will evolve this technology for use in the chemical industry. We optimize our production network. The second key pillar is that we're optimizing our production network. That means that we are making our production more efficient and we are expanding our production capacities even further. At the start of the year, we successfully expanded our production capacity in Brunsbüttel by 200 thousand tons in the area of MDI rigid foams. That's already providing us opportunities for additional growth this year. We are becoming leaders in sustainability. Covestro is leading the way on the topic of sustainability, and that is the third pillar I would like to address. Our society is facing major challenges. We will not be able to resolve many of them without plastics, because plastics are one of the most sustainable materials there are. But you have to rigorously adopt an approach focused on circularity. And we're embarking on a long strategic journey here, one that will also be arduous, but we're convinced that the goal is worthwhile. I want to now take you on a journey it starts with issues to which the global community is again turning its focus, the major global challenges, climate change, environmental pollution, dwindling resources, to name just a few. The coronavirus crisis has dispelled these issues only briefly, and they will move increasingly to the fore in the future. Many feel we've reached a crossroads, that the new start also offers an opportunity to create a better, more sustainable world. This has found its way into people's minds, in society, among political leaders, in the business community, in the scientific, cultural, and financial worlds. Terms such as green recovery have been coined for this. And Cavestro, too, aims to contribute to this break with the past because we want to make the world a brighter place. That is the rationale and purpose of our company, and we know how to get there. A sustainable, climate-neutral future is feasible but only if we make a significant common effort. Society and the economy must find a responsible approach to our limited resources and make circularity the new guiding principle. And not least, we must make value creation more sustainable. We have the blueprint for a truly sustainable world, the concept of the circular economy. It has to become our new global guiding principle. The circular economy will significantly advance protection of the environment. It will able, enable us to conserve resources if implemented without compromise and worldwide. It will help to attain greenhouse gas neutrality and curb global warming. 
How will that work? By ensuring that we do not use carbon from fossil sources such as crude oil. And if, however, it is used, then this must be used in a closed-loop cycle where it cannot enter the atmosphere. The circular economy means we are leaving behind linear consumption and production patterns that are geared to one-time use. Instead, we will use goods repeatedly and for a long time. We will avoid waste and understand and use unavoidable waste as a resource to a much greater extent than we do now. For you and me, as consumers, this means we are breaking with our habits of the past. We are changing our behavior. The business community faces the challenge of adapting supply chain, production methods, and products. The circular economy offers us very considerable economic opportunities here. Plastics play a key role along the way to circularity. They are a particularly sustainable material. The world needs plastics if we want a healthier, smarter, and more sustainable world. The circular economy will also help us in the fight against plastic waste. To make it crystal clear, we face an enormous waste management problem here. Plastics themselves are part of the solution, and that is why they are still urgently needed. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel sure you will agree with me. Covestro must walk the talk and commit itself wholeheartedly to the circular economy. It is a worthwhile goal. This is where we will take our company. It will be our guiding star in the future. We will be fully circular. This sentence goes to the heart of our strong vision. It completes our corporate mission statement. It specifies the direction to take and it gives very tangible form to what we call purpose. We know exactly what our company's raison d'etre is to make the world a brighter place every day. As a plastics manufacturer, we want to do our part for a more sustainable world. We want to help to resolutely counteract climate change because we will not succeed without the features of high-tech plastics. At the same time, plastics must be fully recycled in the future. We will be fully circular. What does that mean? First, that we are comprehensively establishing the principle of circularity at our company. All divisions around the globe will develop specific concepts for that. Each of us will make our contribution. On the other hand, we want to actively shape the circular economy with the whole of society in the chemicals and plastics industry and beyond. We want to make a contribution to achieving a greenhouse gas neutral economy. For this reason, Covestro will also become greenhouse gas neutral over the long term. With Covestro's new vision, we will be better able to satisfy our stakeholders. Our customers want sustainable products made in an eco-friendly way. Our employees want our actions to be meaningful. Policymakers and regulatory authorities expect that we achieve the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. And you, dear shareholders, have an interest in continuous value creation, just as we do. And I would like to emphasize this one more time. The circular economy offers considerable economic potential, and Covestro is already very well positioned to benefit from this with our products which help reduce energy consumption and emissions, whether in the area of mobility or construction, and with our highly efficient production processes that economize resources. Shareholders, in the future, we want to become even better, though. We want to make our production completely circular. We want to create a closed-loop carbon cycle, and we are striving to deliver a comprehensively sustainable product portfolio, a portfolio that supports the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. To enable that, we launched a long-term strategic program in 2019. Step by step, we are now infusing it with life. We will measure our results with concrete targets and key indicators, and we're currently working on these. In the process, we are focusing on four promising strategic areas. First, alternative raw materials, biomass and CO2, as well as scrap materials and waste will replace fossil raw materials such as crude oil. Secondly, innovative recycling, thanks to energy-efficient new technologies, scrap materials and waste can be more efficiently recycled. Third, 
joint solutions. To drive the circular economy, Covestro is cooperating with others across industries and thus breaking ground for new business models. Fourth, renewable energy. The circular economy is only truly sustainable if we use electricity from alternative sources. And this is why we will gradually switch to such sources at our sites. Here we've recently set an example. The Danish energy supplier Ørstedt will supply our German sites with green electricity for 10 years from 2025 onward. The power will be operated or generated from a wind farm being erected off the North Sea island of Borkum. This purchase agreement is unprecedented in scale and it will hopefully contribute to accelerating the expansion of wind energy. We've already chalked up successes in other respects, too. In the area of alternative raw materials, we are already using CO2 to make plastics. For this effort, we were a finalist at the end of last year in the German Future Prize of the President of Germany. In terms of recycling technologies, we have launched more than 20 research and development projects. This includes the reuse, the reuse of mattress foam. We're making good headway here. We're also making progress with partnerships. For example, in the joint Circularize Plastics Initiative. The goal of this is to enable traceability of plastics by means of blockchains, that is, digitally encrypted local databases. Ladies and gentlemen, regardless of all these successes, we are just at the beginning of the road. There is still a long way to go before the circular economy becomes the new guiding principle in our company and in the world. This journey calls for know-how, inventiveness, courage and perseverance, and of course, support. I therefore ask you to support Covestro on the long journey toward the circular economy. Please get behind our new vision. It will be worthwhile for our planet, for the well-being of its inhabitants, and for sustainable value creation. To conclude my presentation, I would like to recap where we currently stand. The current or the economic development uh, environment in 2019 was already challenging, and 2020 has developed into an absolutely exceptional year. This has become quite clear. Let's look at some of our customer industries. They have been facing significant challenges for some time now. One example is the automotive industry, which is currently going through structural change. And then there are geopolitical uncertainties. Consider the trade conflict between the U.S. and China. The impact from the coronavirus pandemic on the economic environment, production, and supply chains is a further aggravating factor. How this will unfold cannot fully be foreseen at the present. How long will COVID-19 continue to hold the world in its grip? No one can say this for sure today. So for us, this means the economic environment will remain uncertain in the second half of the year as well. And we must be well prepared for this. Therefore, we will continue to focus on efficiency, cost awareness, and safeguarding liquidity. We have taken the right action early on with our perspective program. This has now benefited us in the coronavirus crisis. At the same time, we've intensified our short-term cost-cutting measures. And we have implemented many additional measures. The results from the second quarter demonstrate that these measures are working. We have rigorously countered the effects and achieved a sound position for ourselves. And we will not relent in our efforts. For this reason, we are reconfirming our guidance for the full year again today. Shareholders, even as we place our short-term focus on safely navigating Covestro through the crisis, we must not lose sight of our long-term goals. This is very important to me. We're therefore relentlessly pursuing our long-term goal even now. We will be fully circular. That is our guiding star. We work toward this each and every day because we are assuming responsibility for a sustainable new beginning following the coronavirus crisis, for a brighter world to live in. We are pleased you are joining us on this journey. Thank you for your attention. Hi again, and thank you for tuning in to our first ever virtual annual general meeting. Did you miss anything? 
then make sure to visit our website where you will find all the relevant details under covestro.com slash press. If you have any further questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. We'll make sure to respond as fast as we can. And I see you next time.